Hey guys, welcome to this brand new episode of Suits and Sports. And joining us today, all the way from Spain, we have a international sports lawyer, and he's currently the head of legal affairs at Essentially Sports. It's Mr. Rishwik Pandra. Hi, sir. How are you doing today? Thanks for having me here, Ryan. Thanks for having me, sir. It's an absolute pleasure. And how are you guys doing? We're doing great. I, I know we have a formal chat before the recording, so let's not do more of these formalities. Let's jump right in. So before, like, uh, so we continue. So how is Valencia treating you now? And how is your Euro top? Euro yeah. is going on, like, in you are sitting in Europe, you are enjoying Euro. How is that going? Uh, there are two sides of uh, the coin there. So one way is certainly that it is opening up. Valencian restrictions are opening up, but you also have to be careful because this is exactly how things started back home for us in India. So you have to be a little more smart, and I'm I'm slightly more careful in my approach. And Valencian summer has kicked in, and it's beautiful. So all the time you want to be at the beach, it could be problematic if you slip up right now, and I've not been vaccinated yet. So I got to be careful. Okay, sir. So, so uh, moving on to the question. So, so my first question to you is, sir. So, so you're you're currently the head of legal at Essentially Sports. So, could you give us an insight as to what you do and what the company overall does? Okay, thanks for the free marketing. I'm getting there. So, my company, Essentially Sports, it is a sports media company. So, right now, we are just focused on digital content creation. Nothing more than that. We'll be transcending to that sometime soon in the future. So what I do is mine is a balance of legal and business affairs. So I'm in touch with, I'll be in direct contact with the founders. So it's a lot more to do with taking business decisions with a legal perspective. So my, for the last one, one and a half year, I've been working with them with full-time basis and it's more of data protection, digital media side of things. And then you also are dealing with a different dimension of only online frontier. I'm dealing with Google algorithms. I'm dealing with, it's just, it's just a very wide range. And of course it's a digital media company. You've got intellectual property. That's a no brainer. So yeah, it's just a very different multifaceted approach in terms of legal, but that's only half of what I do. The other half is actually the business side of things. But there is a question from my side, like, uh, you guys are the, like you guys are something we can say the second generation of sports lawyers, right? Mm -hmm. So okay. if we consider ourselves like the first generation is the old person, the old pupils in India, and then second generation, you guys are we are the third generation, and now people are running for this post law sports law. So I want to know one thing from you started from VIT. What makes you think for go for this sports law? What was that charismatic thing happened in you? You went for this sports law. That's a very interesting question because uh, I went pro in cricket at the age of 15. Okay. So I took that up seriously and all I wanted to be was a cricketer in my life. And I started playing. And then at that period, you finish school and you're asked to choose a university, what sort of a course you want to. Thankfully for the support system I had around me, they approached me and they said, okay, you play sport, but you do have legal aptitude and also social aptitude might as well take law and play your sport and quite ironically i had picked my particular university because it had better cricketing facilities <laughs> so it is just it's just a story for another day so that was the reason i picked vit chennai thankfully i had like great cricketing experiences because also i had to shift base in terms of my professional circuit in andhra pradesh and now i had moved to chennai where the facilities are significantly better and also the competition is just through the roof there. And thankfully in the university level, I played quite competitive cricket. So I was attending law school and also training eight hours per day. So it's just, it, it was, it was just maniacal time, but also again, as an athlete, you also have privileges. You don't get to attend classes and then you have uh, attendance which are marked for you. That's called on duty. It's called. So, for the first three years of my law school, I literally breeze past just a matter of survival. I didn't want to get an area, just go smooth in, play my cricket. And then at the third year, I realized, okay, now I think it's time to take my law degree seriously because there's a quite a, quite a funny incident also here. I was just walked into a class in my third year of law school 
and people are just talking about what they want to be doing in their careers and someone said they want to do litigation someone said they want to do commercial side of things i'm like oof i can't even differentiate between these things that's a problem then that's why it, it's a sort of a wake up call you have at a certain period of time and also you realize that cricket you've reached a certain level you've reached a rut you can't move from here and then you be a little more practical with your approach and yeah in my third year of law school i decided okay how about may i make something out of this and i also had a very important incidents in my past that it gives me a lot of pride to help athletes and i wanted to be on that sort of thing so i'm like okay if i don't be a professional cricketer the least i can do is work in a dominion where it can have an impact Oh, so that's actually really inspiring. Especially, I- I'm glad to the fact that you decided, like, while joining university, to not put the sports aspect aside. Because I, I myself have a lot of them in law school who've actually stopped playing sports. So that's actually great, great to hear that. So, so uh, I have another question. So, so you were you were talking about how you deal with the business aspect also in regard with your organization. So I want to ask you how important, uh, like, how much has your legal knowledge, like, or your expertise in law, helped you when it comes to business? uh it is actually something you have to unlearn to a certain way if you want to be brutally honest you're working in house sometimes mm-hmm. you just have immense legal perspectives and you tend to over complicate things because when you want to deal with your client you're dealing with business professionals they want yes or no and our legal side when you're dealing with in house you also have a gray area and gray area is something you know but it's not something you should be telling them because if you tell them oh this is a gray area then they're going to go into whatever dominion they feel free they're comfortable with and it can go it you could be in a lot of trouble there so in my sense legal you have to actually evolve in terms of the knowledge you have legal it's not about knowing the particular facets and the complexities anymore it's more of how do you add value to the business at the same time because it's compliance i'm not dealing with litigation litigation is a different ball game altogether meanwhile compliance is you sit and make sure you don't slip up anywhere you know where the boundaries are you know what to exploit like i said there's a gray area when you have a gray area you should also be smart okay this is certainly something i can exploit for my company but also i have to make sure nobody slips up so in my company i literally draw the line so when you're dealing with business people you're not going to be telling them that is illegal this is legal in between gray area you draw the line according to what you feel comfortable with in this company but more importantly you have to understand the business side of things if i can give you a gist of what i learned in the business side of things just so like the basics of the internet basically the online business how do they make money uh, what is it based on you have uh, ip4 version 4 ip version 6 or just pure nuances of the internet itself is more important and then you approach it with your legal knowledge oh, let's move a little bit out from this uh, official works let's move to the euro as you were sitting in spain so first of all which i want to know like which country you are supporting oh i've always supported spain for almost a decade now but uh, right now me being in spain i'm slightly more realistic and also i've heard about the how the locals feel about their chances I, i'd be extremely unfair if i said they're not too optimistic but at the same time they're quite realistic and it's a very far fetched situation for them they have a very flamboyant style of play but it's all about the output you got to put the ball in the net so that's all that matters <laughs> portuguese are looking very good at the moment it's something i can also keep an eye on for them and and definitely and definitely the italians because they normally don't score goals even if you see throughout the history it's all about dogged defense organized defense and just scoring a goal even a 1-0 lead for them is good enough for them to take and take the three points away but right now they're scoring three goals and two matches in a row so i think it's certainly something we are, a lot of people should be scared about but uh, what's your you view like for me when if you see the last match of the spain it was something they passed they have a record of passing right 419 pass right so my father was also asking me you have 419 pass so what's the score what's the score so then he asked me then 
what's your view in this i was like ki for it was like you're preparing for your exam and you started well you know every subject everything every you know the every question answer but at the end of the day you are not first you are coming in somewhere in the you know middle order somewhere ranking middle order so this is my view what was your view when you see the 419 pass 70 73 percent ball position but score was in? it's a typical situation of too many cooks spoil the broth so i i think you have to be see you can be process oriented more often than not but it has to align with what exactly is your output i'm no football expert it'll be extremely extremely unfair for me to comment more about that because i think there are more than enough people on earth who know much more football than me but as per my decent enough background in football and i've been privileged to also understand the game better once i've come here they have a very good style of play and everything but i think they're overly dependent on certain people i think guys like gerard moreno you can trust them and put them up front at the start of the game itself gerard moreno and you've got ferran torres you got to trust them and give the ball to them and say go attack the defense go there don't do tiki taka all the time i don't want to get controversy by saying tiki taka is bad or this but if you're overdoing it it's certainly a problem i think hopefully your flatmate is not a spanish right because if you are saying something regarding tiki taka and if he is nearby you then there is a chance that after this no, session no, no, they won't take offense don't worry the good thing about the spaniards is they're quite uh, honest and they're quite realistic at the same time so they do appreciate it because i they know i support the team it's just that i'm being critical so that's not a problem so yeah tell me another thing like you want to know like you are a cricket fan right and you are in europe so in that part of europe where like if we know except england cricket is not that type of game in all over the euro and you are sitting in that type of country where cricket is like you question mark so when oh, you say good. cricket what they mm-hmm. feel about it like you were someone individual who is saying about cricket sitting in europe and then you were talking with your friend the cricket we play like this and so how this conversation goes when you talk with your friend about cricket and have you ever tried to bring some friend to play cricket in i mean to say spanish european friends actually yeah uh, so my background comes from cricket right so more everybody is always intrigued when i say cricket and they're like oh cricket and you have this stereotype that it's a very it's a sport that you don't need a lot of fitness you can have a beer on the pitch and throw it on the side and things like that so these are just the older shane won era time and and cricket is is evolved extensively you know the i wouldn't say in terms of the physicality you can compare with the basketball or football but you know you have to reach a certain level to even be qualified to play the game now and for me one of my curtailing aspects of my career actually injuries my my body couldn't take it unfortunately i was not given good genes or whatever but my body couldn't take it stress fractures dogged knees and so many issues so cricket is evolved to a certain level so i come and tell these people is like just hang in there it's not about the game where you're having beer in the boundary it's not that anymore it's it is a fast paced approach to that and that's one of the fastest growing sport also in terms of exponential growth in broadcasting in terms of how they are reaching and making money also even the pure money model cricket is just got immense potential and i've tried to explain i've i've made i've, I've made that a few friends watch ipl with me they did have fun quite coincidentally three of them were sitting with me and there was a double super over game i think last year is an incredible double super over game and they were just sitting there like woof if this is the game all the time mate i'm going to absolutely love this but then i'm like okay hang in there it's t20 i know there's just a lot of i i'm i'm more of a i play a lot of t20 my specialization is t20 but if you know cricket you know the real game is not there but it is the need of the hour. we have to be practical in the way the game needs to evolve also and my friends i remember my roommate is a portuguese is like if i practice for one year will i be in the portugal national team and he's very confident that he can be in the portugal national team i'm like bro you can say whatever you want but it's european cricket league is going on there are enough people who are playing in portugal also don't think you just start batting in one year and then by the end of the year you play for the national team it's it's a good banter it's a it's a healthy uh, level of knowledge transformation we have between ourselves so they do appreciate what you what i bring to the table because cricket is also a majority mental sport 
and you have to sort your mental aspects of the game more clarity in the game meanwhile if you see the other sport i'm not saying the other sport are not involved mentally it is you are living with yourself in cricket field as a batter if you're playing a five day game you're not talking to anybody it's just you 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 are you're fighting a war against yourself you're fighting for yourself and if things don't go you're beating yourself up also <laughs> and like i think andre agassi i think a period of in his autobiography he said that there are only few sport where you get to talk to yourself and that's a problem where you get to talk to yourself continuously and tennis cricket baseball they can definitely take a toll on your mental side of things so these mental aspects it's something i i share with my friends here in europe and they do appreciate it i think that really interesting aspects that you brought in there so, so i'm going to put you in a really uh, i don't know if it's a tough situation for you right i'm going to put you in a difficult position by asking you this question you can answer it anyway it's okay you don't have to particularly choose one uh, but yeah which one would you choose the cricket culture in india or the football culture in spain cricket culture in india football culture oof it is a very very difficult question it's actually a very very difficult you got to give me metrics like on what basis i'm being very diplomatic here but on what basis what is the metric if you just want to enjoy directly without i think they're just two different things and right. absolutely different ends of the coin i can't even compare and if you could say basketball and um, basketball and football i think those would fall in a similar right, right. true and uh, okay i still have to give you an answer i'm very stuck but me i played cricket so i think i have to just give it an edge there i cannot be supporting just because i'm in spain i can't say football it's still cricket for me <laughs> so that's great that's great so so actually you're in spain so uh, from what i know euro league is actually uh, i'd say it's the most prominent league after the nba uh, in regard with basketball so how's the basketball culture in europe though like like apart from the league like do you see people playing it on the streets and stuff like that massive it's not just euro league actually the mm-hmm. the europeans and even the spanish are really really right right after they really follow nba and uh, as much as football you see right on the streets everybody is playing it's not streets actually they are very structured the football fields they have in the parks and things like that but again basketball is actually more street based like you have near the schools you have courts there random people are coming together and playing some nice rap music is being played in the side it's a, it's a different vibe altogether i had the privilege of playing a couple of times also here basketball okay. and it's taking it's 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 been taken very seriously and they're pretty good at it and the euro league is actually quite good and nba this is the comparison i would make personally out of my limited knowledge nba is a very flamboyant league you've got little more individual skills going on meanwhile euro league is a very structured the, the way they play is very structured it's a very technical and tactical game they play here it's still good it's bloody good trust me i think we have a rivalry also the real madrid barcelona over there like even in basketball <laughs> actually i'm living in valencia the team is also here so Oh yeah, Valencia, right. they've got a culture. Everybody's got a culture. That's the beauty of it. Once I've just come here, and I was talking about El Clasico, they're like, I don't give a damn about El Clasico. Valencia, Villarreal, and uh, what's the other one? Okay, Valencia, Levante. These three are the Valencian clubs, football clubs. So they're like, I would give these preference over Real Madrid, Barcelona, which we don't give a damn about. <laughs> like uh, just now, you mentioned one thing. like uh, way structured football when you were saying that i was i was thinking of our time like hopefully you also did it like in school we used to play football like in street means like with a water bottle <laughs> with a plastic coke bottle we kick it and that's the food. that's how we play in school level also right so but i i have walked in lorries also for certain like british sports schools i went there for they even if they want to play football is not like us right kicking a plastic bottle and we are playing against each other so in that in that case i feel like we are very skillful <laughs> than them the like kicking a bottle then you are juggling that bottle then kicking it and goal so it's something like which i even feel like even i think sir you have also done the cricket you can take out a like if you don't have a bat also you can play with wooden stick or somewhere from taking a bench and you can use as bat i think there is somewhere you no know, like european people are lacking behind the skill with the natural skill which we have 
Oh, oh that that is a, see we have in a certain we make the best out of what we are given some time and that's also a privilege we have so that's also a privilege we have and meanwhile we have structured fields might as well go into a structured field and learn the right way so you might miss out on something like resilience because when i was young used i started at like what 4 or 5 i was just on living on the streets literally playing any sport you give me and for me you give me just a small strip i play cricket there you give me a small strip so give me a smaller strip i still play football there so you can give me any sort of a situation you got to make the best out of what you've been given and that's how my cricketing journey also started and you just play with random people and then if you hit a particular window you get extra runs there if you break someone else's window you get more runs there i think typical grassroots level cricket stories you would have heard it's something all of us are really privileged with i think it's a generational thing also uh, i want to know one thing like you have also a degree in patent right jain you right mm-hmm. ip yeah so now coming to the how do you feel like uh, how this patent law the degree which you have in patent law how this now helping you to grow your setup in sports field it does actually certainly if you talk to any uh, sports lawyers so sports law itself is not it's non existent if you know it's non existent sports law instead it should be the juxtaposition of the nexus between sport and multiple disciplines of law and if you're talking about purely sports law if i can relate to one thing or many experts say that only football law only football law is the only developed jurisprudence in terms of where you can actually call it sports law so the rest of it is sports and law like what i'm doing right now i'm i'm working with the sports digital media company i'm doing it's uh, since i'm getting a taste of dev kumar sir <laughs> <laughs> dev kumar sir that suddenly what we be taught in the right way here you could say that in a certain way okay and uh, sports yeah so it's a multidisciplinary approach so intellectual property contract drafting understanding the basics of other important situations is very important and it certainly had helped me the intellectual property background i had so once you enter the dominion of sport it is quite easy uh, you can be useful in the sports industry basically intellectual property contract drafting i would also say nowadays understanding the digital space understanding digital media is extremely important if you can recommend it to anybody well uh, so so uh, thank you so much sir, for that answer so so uh, as you can see we are running short of time so as we conclude so would you uh, do you have any concluding remarks or yeah uh, like things you would like to tell to all the aspiring uh, sports lawyers and anybody who wants to work in the sports field hmm you you have just put me in the limbo there but it's a very important situation you put me there let me make some sense out of this so for me personally i don't know to sound dramatic but sport is a very pure space i tell you why it's a pure space because when the world is so adamant on dividing us sport is certainly a leveler which actually brings us together and i'll give you a particular incident that's really stuck with me and that is why the day i realized okay i can make something good out of my law degree was one of the reasons of my past experiences in the sporting circuit so the problem we have in the indian market i won't say a problem it's the existing situation we create robust framework robust policies but there is impatient level of implementation you don't create you cannot create grassroots level programs meant for tier one cities only and say that oh we have created grassroots level programs let us implement it everywhere the differences are very stark in india for me personally i would say the planning should be as robust as anything but the implementation should also be patiently robust and you have to involve multiple stakeholders and bring them together and put them there now coming back to the incident i was talking about i was playing i was i think i was 17 and a very important under 19 selection matches were happening so my brother dropped me on his scooter at the ground and then and then i see another friend who's just coming in a car and then i'm like oh damn i wish i had a car and i would like to be dropped here and come to the ground that way and it also feel good because it was 45 degrees in the summer it was incredibly hot throughout the day you're in the sun and then there's this guy who was just coming out of a shed so 
in cricket fields you have this metal shed where you keep the rollers you keep the watering equipment all those things so on these grassroots level places you have this metal shed which is cooking you go inside you can't even breathe properly this guy is coming out of there and he he tells me that yeah last night i was i was just staying there i asked him why are you staying there he's like i come from a different village and uh, i want to make something out of this so i'm coming here so this man is packed cold food for 3 days and he's coming and staying in the shed by taking the permission of the coach and he's trying to make something out of this so it really really moved me and also the day you're aware of the privileges is the day you keep moving forward and you keep growing in your career so that was a very very important moment for me and from there on the next day he didn't make the selection because he didn't belong to a particular faction of the politician who was belonging to the particular district i was at and that really it just move it just disrupts your complete because this man if he makes it he's going to inspire communities he's going to inspire a village who have got nothing going on for them so we as sports industry professionals we are just not sports fans anymore we have to be more than that you we should be there to add genuine value to the industry like i said sport is a very pure space if you are in the sports industry to be an agent lawyer or a business professional for societal validation i'm extremely sorry sports shouldn't be for those people it should be in a way it should be a win win situation you add value you get in return it's as simple as that and you don't even have to worry about that and the good thing is anybody who's not got the right motives are easily found out and you won't last long so that is the recommendation that's the blunt truth because recently my friend is an agent so on a sunday night he was meeting a couple of other agents he was meeting a player till 3 am and then he was like tomorrow morning i'm going to an academy to watch another player play at 7 am with 4 hours of sleep and then you're like what are you doing but this is what he lives for and it works for him it's a win win situation he has a very good affinity with the players he has great respect for what they do and the players respect for what they what this agent brings to the game and once you have this you're going to be working 24 hours it doesn't matter you won't have sleep or you won't have anything and sport is such a fast moving space it grows so quickly you have to be dynamic in this industry and that comes from having the right motive and right intent to enter the industry you shouldn't be here just because sports law sounds good on your cv or sports law would keep me cool in my society or something like that and i'm just being very blunt here i have to be honest with this you more often than not we make mistake on this and i think sport deserves people who add value because we want to be able to unearth the next angola kante natarajan hartik pandya or uh, the basketballer from senegal which is taco fall you want to be bringing these people in because these guys are going to inspire communities like for example today the indian women's test cricket is going on they gave up 37 year old pitch for them to play it's a test game you have to give them the due respect and now people talk about equal pay gender gap all this and i think it's all is just a wrong situation it's just non opinions for non problems i would say you should have the right ideology because women make up at least 20 to 30 as stakeholders of the men's sport okay so now you're saying that and they are an important stakeholder don't they need inspiring ideal professional they need to look up to as well i was listening to another conversation i think rashi was saying the other day about uh, gender pay and gender gap in cricket and she said you cannot mix these two there are absolutely separate things equal pay doesn't come from just pure merit it's also about positive discrimination you got to give the women sport an impetus and it's extremely important so yeah uh, i've got another minute to speak there so that's my conclusion you have to be in for the right reasons in the industry and if you do that i don't see a reason why anybody cannot be successful there that's about oh, it so thank you actually that was a really i wouldn't say touching but it was really great on like straight to the point and especially the way you explained all of it it was awesome like it, i didn't realize even though it was conclusion you usually think it short and it seemed very short 
and it was really good sir uh, i loved it personally so uh, subrajit sir would you like to just give the word of thanks unofficially so it is sir it was our pleasure to have you from the beginning when gspr was not a gspr hopefully you remember that message which i i absolutely said to begin the can i just quickly add something before you finish one year ago when i got the message i'm like oh these these guys are trying something really tough let's see where this goes and one year from then you have made real grounds you have created great content with so many things i'm really grateful for what you do because it adds value to me i'm not a established professional but i keep learning from different people and if you're not learning from different people there's a problem there so kudos to you guys and the and the team behind like i still remember is you said like even when i messaged you like uh, that time ryan was also not there that was only like i was single handedly doing everything so so it started from like you uh, know like uh, zero to now is trying i am trying to focus and my like my idea is to give a uh, same thing the below privilege person little bit platform so they can for a certain like they can write their dream they can see because and this is the reason i was going for this recording for at least if they hear something from you guys they will be do something to and once again thank you thank you very much so an absolute privilege guys thanks for having me thank you so much sir thank you so much guys uh, please don't forget to like share and subscribe stay safe have a nice day